Okay, um, we're going to have a scripture reading, one verse, um, and then I'll introduce our speaker. Good morning. Um, please rise for today's passage. And like Pastor Jonathan said, it's just one verse, so we can all read it together. And the verse is Hebrews 4, uh, verse 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Now, I was invited by uh, God's Remnant Assembly, Pastor Tayo Emmanuel, last, last year to their annual conference. So a group of us actually from our church went there, and I had a privilege of sharing God's message uh, with them, God's Remnant Church Assembly. God's Remnant Assembly is located in our previous former building pr uh, before we moved here in 2010. So 10 years ago, our church was actually in that, the current God's Remnant Church. So that's the connection initially, but uh, Pastor Tayo graciously in invited me, not knowing who I am, <laughs> so... <laughs> So a group of us, we went there and, uh, and shared the word of God together, and we had a great time worshiping God together. Pastor Tayo is a, is a missionary called to serve the least reached nations of the world, we call it majority world, including Africa, Asia, and the Mediterranean countries through Missio Day, simply means mission of God. And Pastor Tayo is, uh, is currently the overseer of God's Remnant Assembly Global, as well as God's Remnant Assembly in Colombia. Um, yeah, it's a privilege, Pastor Tayo, to have you. So please come up and, uh, and share the message, God's message.
Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for uh, the opportunity for me to be here today. I see it as a very great privilege, and uh, um, I know that this is nothing but, but God and, and Jesus. Uh, I want to thank God for Pastor uh, Kim and his family and the, the team that uh, visited us when we had a, a program, that um, they are men and women of the Spirit, um, um, not, we're not knowing each other, and uh, they really graciously responded to our invitation. We're very grateful. Um, we were looking at uh, uh, the building where we are, and uh, we had uh, some people give, somebody really even from this church came visiting and came to the building and said, oh my God, you guys transformed this place, and uh, we used to be here. And I was praying, and uh, uh, the Holy Spirit said, the God that helped you to move is going to also help us to move to get to a better place and said, well, why not connect with this church? Because there's something about this church that's so beautiful, that's so wonderful, even from the, the name of the church, the church of the Philippi. So I want to thank God for your church. I want to thank God for what God is using you to do. You might not really know. I want to bless the name of the Lord. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Come on, let's do that. I also want to thank God for your phenomenon uh, uh, wonderful uh, spirit filled passionate pastor that even we've met for just a brief time but I've seen the fruit of the spirit you know the Bible talks about the fact that um, by their fruit you shall know them and so uh, I've seen the, the fruit and I, and I want to thank God for his life and thank God for the entire team in this church a beautiful church a beautiful people I always like it when I come to uh, uh, to, to share, especially with people that are not, uh, we don't have the same uh, uh, maybe cultural background or the same race. We only have one thing in common, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus that has redeemed all of us and, make, and made us whole to be one. Can we just put our hands together and celebrate that? <laughs> celebrate that. Also, I want to thank God for this church because this is a mission-based church, a church that's not only bound by walls, I want to see the whole earth filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. That should be everyone's uh, mission, everyone's passion. I want to thank God that that's in your heart. I want to thank God that that's even why we are all gathered here. To just see the Lord glorified, especially in the middle of so many pressure and tension that we have right now. I believe very strongly that Jesus is the only way. He said in his word that I am the way and the truth and the life. And I know in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, what God has already said and prophesied concerning his word, we come to pass in our life. We come to pass in the life of the church of God generally in Jesus' name. If you won't mind, can we all stand up as we pray? I want us to just honor Jesus and just glorify him. We want to pray as we go into the word this morning. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for your name. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. We thank you for making today the first day of March, the third month of the year, our season of glory and favor. We thank you for what you're going to do. Our eyes look up to you. Thank you for forgiving us our sins. Thank you for cleansing us by your blood. Thank you for opening our eyes. Thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for everyone that is here. Thank you for the hope of eternity that we have in you. Thank you for the power of your word, the entrance of which gives light and understanding to the simple. Thank you for gathering us together in unity, O oh God Almighty, under the same umbrella, putting us together under your name, the name of Jesus. We are very grateful for the things you've done in our life in the month of January. We say thank you. For that which you've done for the entire month of February, we say thank you. For that which you're going to do in the month of March that is commencing today, we are already, already giving you thanks on credit. Take all the glory and take all the honor for the healings, for the deliverances, for the things you've done in our life that we can't see, oh God. For the troubles that you do not allow to happen, we are grateful. For taking care of this coronavirus, Jesus, we are very thankful for the United States and for all the countries of the earth, including Asia continent, African continent, and Middle East continent. We thank you because you uphold all things 
by the word of your power as we gather here be glorified let today be a change in our life let it mark a turnaround for all of us father we look up to you perfect that which concerns us we bless your name in jesus name we pray the people of god shout the loudest amen, amen. praise god put your hands together for jesus you may be comfortably seated i'm sorry i'm a kind of a loud person so you wouldn't mind it's just the way by which i express myself i know pastor jonathan might be soft a little bit but i'm kind of loud so please just bear with me and i know we're gonna be blessed amen, amen. well the whole church when pastor king came in there and we had some prayers they they just get on me we gotta get him again get him again so we are slated him already for a program coming up in September. We just thank God that God is going to make it happen in Jesus' name. Now, we, we have here um, one of the things that the, from the scripture we read, a very divine invitation that God is giving all of us. Sometimes we don't really even take advantage of it. For the Godhead... I'm talking about the one who made the heaven and the earth. I'm talking about the one with whom there is no impossibility. The God who cannot be advised, who has no beginning, who has no ending, who knows all things, who has been waiting in this room before we all came here, everywhere present, all sufficient, all powerful, ever loving, never changing God. The God who knows our future, the God who is the healer, who is the provider, who is the helper, the one who made the heaven and the earth, the one who made the universe, the one who sit upon the circles of the earth. For that God to give us an invitation to his counsel, I think it's a privilege. The Bible speaks in the book of Psalms 8, it says, What is man that thou was made, and the son of man that, that thou has conceived? What is man that you have made? The man that God made is now given an invitation to come to the heavens of God on the basis of prayer. He says, I'm giving you an invitation and I want you to come. And I don't just want you to come um, at a particular point in time. I want you to come any day. I want you to come any time. I want you to come anyhow. Just follow my rules. I'm giving you access to my heavens. Now, we know that when God sits, God is sitting upon the throne of heaven. When God sits, everything stand the 24 elders have to stand the beast the four beasts that are there have to stand the host of heaven has to stand but when man comes in inside jesus we can sit the bible says he has made us to sit together with him in the heavenly places far above all principality and power i want to begin to think look at the relationship between us and jesus what God has done for us inside Jesus, that in the heavens we can all come in there as sons and daughters of God and sit with God. What a privilege. What a privilege that we must not take for granted. What a privilege. Now, God is now inviting us to his throne. He said, let us come to the throne of grace. I want you to, to think about that. The throne we are invited to sit upon is not the throne of judgment. I know when Moses came here, Moses had a, a, a seat. That seat is called the seat of judgment. It's a prefigure of what Christ is like in the whole testament. And we saw Moses sitting upon that seat of judgment. Anytime the children of Israel have a problem, you know, the law is already written. So he's going to judge them based on the law. You know, somebody wants to divorce his wife. Somebody has done something wrong. Somebody curse, or somebody broke the law, or break the law of Sabbath. Moses will sit on that seat and judge them. Either he's going to condemn them, or either he's going to um, ask them to go and make a sacrifice or atonement, or maybe they'll bring um, uh, the feast of tres uh, or a trespass offering, and they'll bring all those things to to God uh, to Moses. And Moses will clear their sin, or others will be stoned. Now, 
Jesus is inviting us to another throne. It is called the throne of grace. Why? Because he died for our sins. And when he died for our sins, he took our place. We're supposed to be the one that's supposed to be dead. But he became man to die for our sins, to save us from destruction, to save us from sickness, to save us from disease, to save us from sorrow, to save us from every attack of the enemy, to save us from the affliction of the devil. He came to deliver us and he took our place and jesus said i have a throne for you the throne of grace the throne of grace is also called the throne of favor because to make it very simple grace means favor grace means god is giving me something that i don't deserve god is giving me something that i would never have possessed in my life now when we look at mercy on the other side as god is going to give me uh, uh, god is not going to give me something that i deserve that is mercy the bible says um, it's mercy you know the endurance forever is by the mercy of god that we live alive he said it's your it's of your mercy that we are not consumed we will all have it consumed we can look down on others maybe something bad happened to them it's not because we're smart it's not because even being saved even salvation is by his mercy and grace everything we have in life is not because every opportunity you and i have in life every blessing everything god has done in our life it's not because we decide it is not because we know how to pray it's not because we are nice it's not because we are smart it's not because we are educated it's not because um we just love to read the bible it's not because our parents they brought us well it's not because of our place of birth it's not because we are asian we're american we're african we're african-american none of that is because of his mercy and i want to put my hands together for jesus this morning just to thank him for his mercy i just want to thank god for his mercy his mercy brought us thus far. We are alive today because of his mercy. If God wants to meet out judgment that we all deserve all over the nations, nobody must be alive. Do you remember that the scriptures, you know, uh, refer to the, the sins of man in the days of Noah? He said, he repent, he repent me. He said, I, I, I want to I say it in King James Version. That, that was what I've been reading, long, uh, reading for a long time. He said, he repented me that I made man. God says, I regret that I made man and God wiped off all the race of men but for one man and his family and the Bible talks about that man Genesis chapter 6 verse 8 he said but Noah found grace in the sight of God that is the same grace God is inviting us to and there's a reason why God is inviting us into that in that, that that throne because of many that are dying today we are the hope of the world we are the light of the world we are the salt of the earth now when you turn on when you turn off the light in this room obviously we're gonna have darkness darkness is not a thing darkness has no substance darkness has no basis darkness has no expression darkness is nothing but the absence of light there is nothing like darkness want to fight light darkness cannot fight light the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god all things were made by him without him was anything made that was made a name is light and the light is the light of men and the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it i don't know how thick that darkness could be he cannot eat up the light here no matter how thick no matter the intensity of the darkness he cannot switch off all the lights that's in this room that's the power of the god we're dealing with the god who is awesome the god who is the healer the god who has not only the final say he has the holy say nobody can challenge this god nobody can say what doest thou nobody can question him he is the one that has everything under control let's put our hands together for him i just love to praise him i just love to praise him i just love to praise him i don't care what the doctor say i don't care what anybody says regarding your life god does not just have the final say he has the holy say if he says you're on top nobody can bring you down if he says you are healed nobody can say you will die if he says you will make it nobody can say you will not make it i want us to have that at the back of our mind now this god is now giving us a prime opportunity a divine invitation 
and it's not saying come if you're white come if you're black come if you're african come if you're educated come if you're illiterate he's saying come to my throne he's not inviting us to the floor he's not inviting us behind he's not inviting us back there in the room he said where i am sitting i'm sitting on the throne of grace you too can come and catch this grace come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy mercy for yourself mercy for your generation mercy for your children mercy for your grandchildren your grandkids come and take mercy for them you don't know how they live you don't know what they're doing you don't know what they are battling with you don't know what they're feeling you don't know where they are right now but as long as you can come to my throne of grace to intercede for them i'm going to take care of them i'm going to fix them i'm going to change them come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need take note of this it's not saying that come and catch the grace for now in the time of need a time we come in all of our life when we will need god if not every minute every second a song on a hymn says i need you every hour Oh, most precious Lord, though Satan tempts every time, but to you I come, I need you. We need this God. He said, there's a time in your life when you're going to need God. You need him regarding your health. You need him in your marriage. You need him in your body. You need him when you are 50. You need him when you are 60. You need him when you are going for surgery. You're going to need him in your business. You're going to need him when your children, they, 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 they reach a teenaging years. When things, their hormones are shooting here and there, you don't know what to do. You're going to need him in the room. You're going to need him somewhere. You're just going to need God. We're going to need God in the time of coronavirus. You're going to need me. Come to the throne of grace. You're going to need it in the nations. You're going to need him when you travel. You're going to need him in the here. You're going to need him everywhere. We are living in a, in a, in a terrible world where we cannot even, you know, make a, an intelligent guess of what's going to happen next. As of this time last year, nobody knew the state of what we, we're talking about right now. Nobody knew it's going to happen. But God knows everything. He said, come, get this thing on credit. And I see that as God inviting us to the throne of prayer. A place where all of us can gather to pray to change things. Don't let's forget that on this planet, Satan is God. I know God is in charge, but according to Luke chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, it says Satan is the God of these wars. Adam sold the hurt to Satan, and Satan took it. But Jesus came back to win the heart, the word for us. He came to give it back to us, and for us to have it, there must be an enforcer. Thank God for the executive branch of our government. Thank God. For the judiciary uh, uh, form of our government and the third one but don't let's forget that all of those laws no matter how it is written and how it is sealed our police still be the one to enforce it when the judge pass a judgment they give you an eviction out of a property the judge won't move the judge won't go there the president won't go there you know it is the cops that has to go there to enforce it and the bible says that from the day of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence take it by force so there are things that god has settled as a matter of fact let me back 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 backtrack a little bit there are no things everything god has settled but for us to enjoy everything that God has settled, there must be a force on our side. And that force is in prayer. Where we enforce what is written in the Bible. Not just a mental accent or a casual understanding. God says it. By his stripes I am healed. Oh, a lot of Christians are dying in the hospital. And I believe that the things could happen. You know, we know God in affliction. But there are things that shouldn't, be hap that shouldn't have happened if we have enforced it. Satan, take off your hands of my body. 
take off your hands of my health take off your hands of my marriage take off your hands of my resources take off your hands of that which belong to me that is the throne god is inviting you and i to come a throne of grace a throne of grace now there are few things that could happen to prevent us from assessing this throne number one we can frustrate the grace of god the bible speaks about frustrating the grace of god in the book of galatians chapter 2 i believe verse 21 that we must not frustrate the grace of god what does it mean to frustrate the grace of god when we do, when we when we take it for granted and we are not hearkening to what god has said we are not taking advantage of it then we frustrate the grace of god now second corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 says we can receive the grace of god in vain we receive the grace of god in vain we got the grace but we're not using it we're not taking advantage of it we are the solution to any problem on the earth we are the salt you want to tell me the taste of the community the taste of the state the taste of the nation see the church in there salt salt that sweetens salt that preserve we are at he showed me the taste of, of, of a family you know is the christian there we are that's we, we're not the one that complain that mamas that that give excuse of that past time uh reasons why things are not being done and so he says we that's who we are now we don't receive the grace of god in vain now there are anti grace forces i call it grace virus that can cause us not to be able to enjoy the grace of god we are invited to come to the throne of grace it's a place where we pray and it's a place where our prayers must be answered whether we have it in a way we don't want it because sometimes we pray and god answers our prayers and we don't know god answers our prayers case in point when martha and mary call for jesus to come and raise Lazarus, the, um, to come and heal Lazarus, heal, not to raise from the dead. So Jesus knew the first day, he knew the second day, he knew the third day, and Jesus went there on the fourth day. And Jesus showed up after Lazarus had died. Why the delay? Because Jesus wants him dead, so that when Jesus raised him, Jesus will take all the glory. So that by raising Lazarus, everybody will believe in Jesus. So there are times when God answers our prayers, but we don't know the answer has already come. God wants us to know that every time as his children we cry out to him, he has the obligation based on his word. If we meet all his requirements, we are saved, we are blood washed, we have his Holy Spirit, we are praying according to his will, we are praying according to his word, he will answer us. I want us to know and believe in what the scripture says. Ask, it shall be given. Ask, it God cannot lie. Ask, it shall be given. Come to the throne of grace. Come grab it. It's yours. I'm your daddy. I'm your father. How can you expect, be, expect Bill Gates children to be begging for laptop? Oh, daddy, I need a laptop. I need a laptop. Man, that's, that's insulting. That's the way he insults God when we can't grab the things that God has done, that he's bled for, that he, he suffered for. God will be looking at us, my children, what's wrong with you? I, I, I suffer for all these things for you. Now, what are the things that really mess with the grace that God has given unto us? One, sin we must make sure we walk against sin shall we continue in sin that grace abound and i'm not only talking about overt sin internal sin jealousy pride competition rage disobedience to god flagrant disobedience to his commandments romans chapter 6 verse 1 the, the answer to that question is god forbid god forbid anyone that has been graced anyone that wants to assess every blessing that god placed on the throne of grace we must be someone that hate sin we hate it if we make a mistake and dive into one we quickly get out of it there are things that can happen to the swine 
and a sheep in the mud. The swine will love it. The sheep will be looking for a way out. There are people here, God is going to bring you out in Jesus' name. God is going to bring you and I in Jesus' name. We deal with sin. Sin strangulate gate, the grace. Two, we deal with pride. God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. James chapter 4 verse 6. God give grace to the humble. First Peter chapter 5 verse 5. What is humility? The best definition for humility is the Bible says so, I'll do it. What will make me to do it? Grace. 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 So we need to humble ourselves. Humility, humility, humility. God was speaking to Saul. He says, Saul, when you are small in your eyes, you don't used to do stuff like this. Saul, you've changed. You've changed. When you need the child, when you need the husband, when you need the wife, when you need the healing, when you need the blessing, I know the way you are very committed to me, the way you do things, the way you read your Bible, when you need those blessings, when you need to pass your exam. Oh God Almighty, when you need to pass your board exam, when you need to start the business, I knew what you were doing, but immediately I give it to you. I can't talk to you anymore. I told you to wipe out some people and you make your own personal judgment and keep them alive. Now you're proud. And you don't want God to fight you. When the devil fights you, God will defend you. When the wicked fight you, God will defend you. When demons fight you, God will defend you. But when God fight you, tell me who's going to defend you. I'm praying that God's going to be on our side forever. Number three, prayerlessness. When we don't pray, we can assess grace. We must learn to pray. We must learn to pray. Not only when we come to the building. Not only when we come to the building. Those thoughts come to you about your spouse, about your wife, about your children, about your grandkids. You got to pray. God is giving you an opportunity to pray in the shower, in the car. You got to drive um, 15 minutes of drive, 45 minutes of drive. You got 45 minutes of prayer. Just lifting up somebody in prayer. Lifting up your family in prayer. Some thoughts, lifting up nations in prayer. Nations are dying. People are suffering. You know, and we can't just fold our hands and say, I'm not there. I mean, think about the debt we've witnessed only in Syria. In several nations of the earth, in Yemen. Now we look at it from the other side, the, the enemy. But you know one thing, what, what, what if God just turned the enemy and, and God just, God just do some miracles in their life? Things are going on in, in, in different nations, in different nations, Somalia, different African nations, you know, in Nigeria, all kinds of funny, funny dead. I mean, I've I mean, I, I, I been in a place where, 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 where they slaughter children and they, they, they cut the child into two. The extremists just cut the child into two and blow up a church. We are in a church right now having a good time worshiping Jesus and loving the Lord. Some, the church is the place where they'll be buried. The whole church. But we don't have that. But what do we have? We have prayer. We can come to the throne of grace on their behalf. I see that our pastor is going to judge you. We can, we can lift him up. We can lift him up 10 minutes of prayer every day. Five minutes of prayer every day. Pray for your, for your child. Pray for, your, for any situation. Come to the throne of grace. Any situation is open. It's open. It's open. At your job, for your boss, for our president. We need to pray for our president. We don't have to be on this side. We don't have to be partitioned. We leave all those alone. God place a man there. And if it's God, we pray for the man to be successful. We don't have to be on this side, on that side. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be a party you want to choose. That's your choice. But we don't have a choice when it comes to prayer. We got to pray for our leaders so they don't mislead us. So they are not negatively influenced. It's our job to pray. We don't let your seat at the throne of grace be empty. You have a seat there. Don't let your seat be empty. We need to pray for laborers to go into the nations of the earth. Jesus said, pray that your father will raise up laborers for the harvest. There's so much harvest that we are expecting in the nations. So much harvest. I learned a lot about Korean missions. Powerful people. Wonderful people. And they are still wonderful. 
and they are still powerful. But how could that mission and that, how could that revival be sustained? It can only be sustained by prayer. Because we have a generation that will follow us right now and the generation that are growing right now, they don't even know nothing about God. They've never seen dad and mom pray before. They've been seen fighting. They've been seen war. They've been seen abuse. That's what they see. It's time for prayer to return back to our dining tables and to our living rooms. It's time. And the best way to teach this generation to pray is not to preach it, is not to teach it, is not to talk about it, is to do it. When we do it, they'll learn. Prayerlessness. And spiritual ignorance when we choose to ignore finally what can be an anti-grace love when we don't love God I like all of us to read it first Corinthians chapter 16 verse 22 and we need to go back to love loving God loving God loving God if you love God you're gonna love his people I love this church I love your pastor I love everybody here I don't have to know you to love you and guess what I've been praying for the continent of Asia on a bridge since March 9 1989 I've been praying for the former USSR for years until a time came when Gorbachev and our wonderful president Ronald Reagan met together without any bloodshed I was praying to God as a little child that Jesus dissolve these war, con war nations we don't want the bloodshed because we know the impact of the former USSR regarding the peace of the nation I was a baby when I was a, when I was a teenager when I was praying and God answered my prayers God answered my prayers regarding the, 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 the Berlin Wall West Germany and East Germany I was praying I read it in the news I was praying for Asia I was specifically praying for Korea and I know God is going to transform our North Korea in the name of Jesus. May we all rise up, please, as we take the last scripture. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. I want us to read it, 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. We need to go back to love. And this is not love of talk. It's going to be love from our hearts. Love. There was a question that Jesus posed, poised to Peter after Peter got back to God. This was a man that told God, I don't know you, but God knew his heart. He said, I don't know you. I don't know Jesus three times. Three times. He flagrantly, openly denied Jesus. Jesus told him before the Caught crowd twice. You're gonna deny me twice. Peter said, Oh no, I swear I'm not gonna deny you. Uh, Jesus said, Okay, I know all things. And one little girl met him there and said, Do you know him? He swear. I've never met this man before. But look at Jesus. Remember that in Luke chapter 22, verse, I believe verse um, 30, God said, Simon, Simon, Satan. Has desired to sift thee but look at the antidote and the answer but I have prayed for thee I pray for you because I know what Satan will do he wants to sift you he wants to separate you he wants to but I didn't pray that Satan shouldn't do it because you're gonna come out great you're gonna come out wonderful you're gonna come. I don't know what somebody in this room has been through in life I know you're gonna come out shining in the name of Jesus you're gonna come out better you're gonna come out wonderful I don't care the pressure I don't care the weakness I don't care the things you've suffered I don't care the pain I don't care what the doctor has said I don't care how many times you've had the surgery I believe in my heart that God sent me here because he knew before the word was made I'm gonna be in this room and I'm gonna be equipped with this word I want to let you know you are coming out great in the name of Jesus I believe that put your hands together for Jesus Peter came out 
Peter came out great. But Jesus asked him one question before he was taken away. He said, Peter, do you love me? Ah, he's looking for those who love him. You are praying not because you are paid. You are praying not because you have the time. Daniel was a president. He prayed three times. David was a king. He prayed three times. You're praying not because you have a need, but because God has a need. Because you love him. You look at all the negative situations that surrounds our nation, that surround the nations of the earth, that surrounds our homes, that surrounds our marriages, that surrounds our friends, that surrounds the church. The church. And rather than murmur, rather than complain, rather than have a party spirit, rather than condemn, rather than judge, we gather to pray without being seen. For the scripture says, for your heavenly father that sees you in secret shall give you an open reward. I have a word for you. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. It's a very, very serious word. Can you hear me? Now, look at what it says. If anyone does not love the Lord, let that person be cursed. Now, you now say something. Come, Lord. He now says something. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love to you all. My love to all of you in Christ Jesus. Amen. I want all of us to read it. Can we all read it together? Let's go. If anyone does not love the Lord, Before we close today, I want us to take three minutes. We're going to pray one minute for each prayer. And I want you to lift your heart before the Lord. So that I don't just come and that's it. I want us to pray, Lord Jesus, give me the grace to pray. Don't, don't let my invitation to the throne of grace be taken for granted. I always want to honor this invitation. I like us to pray. Now, can we join hands together with someone? Join hands together. All of us, let's join hands together. Let's do it as a family. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking for grace, oh God, to always pray. Father, you have invited all of us, young, old, youth, adult, children, to come to the throne of grace, layman, pastors. Father, today we join our hands to pray, oh God Almighty, that every time the Holy Spirit reminds us, early in the morning, during our, our, our lunch season, during our recreation, Lord, in the night when we wake up and you remind us to pray, when we receive the text, when we receive the email, those negative information is an opportunity for us to pray. Lord, we receive grace right now not to turn that down. Oh God Almighty, we receive grace not to just not to just relish in our own natural flesh, flesh, flesh mind. Lord, we receive grace right now and we give you praise. And the people of God says, Amen. Amen. I want us to pray against this hula baloo about coronavirus. That God will send that demon back to where it came from. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit behind coronavirus. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in America and in the nations, we command that your judgment will fall on that spirit. In the name of Jesus. For we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of the darkness of this world. Uh, Lord Jesus, you will keep us. You will keep our children. Lord Jesus, the family that's already affected, you will preserve them. We are not going to have those deaths here. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says we shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. We shall live. The Bible says no plague shall come near us. Oh, Father, we renounce that plague. Go back. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. We're going to pray for America finally. That God will uphold this country. 
God will uphold our president, President Donald Trump, and everybody around him. The wisdom of God will descend. The power of God is, I, I, I'm not talking about being a party, I'm talking about praying for our president. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, join me in your thoughts, join me in your words. Father, in the name of Jesus, we uphold our nation. Oh God, before you, we pray for President Donald Trump and his family and everybody around him and all those who are leading this country. Lord, you are leading this state. Oh God, you are leading uh, our community, the mayors, everyone in authority, the, the husband of the whole, of, of homes, of families. Lord, that you uphold us, that we God's people might continue to lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Father, strengthen him. Let your wisdom dominate. Let your power dominate. Take control take charge let your will alone be established for this great nation we thank you lord because we've answered our prayers i thank you for pastor jonathan king and the leadership of this church i thank you for everyone that has come to us attend this first the first service previously before this one and this service lord for all the pastors in this church fill them with your wisdom protect them preserve them in the name of jesus christ whenever they are weary strengthen them in the name of jesus perfect that which concerns them in the name of jesus father let your fire fall upon this church let there be healing let there be miracles let there be salvation let there be dedication to the cause of jesus keep our families father we bless you because we know you have answered us and the people of god agree with god by shouting the loudest amen, amen. no we're gonna shout it come on shout it out shout amen, amen. to the third one shout amen, amen. A round of applause for king jesus thank you so very much come on let's put our hands together for jesus thank you Thank you, Pastor Tayo. I'd like to actually acknowledge uh, brothers and sisters coming from God's Remnant Church. Would you kind of raise your hand this side if you... Okay, so thank you for coming with Pastor Tayo. Thank you.